how did you get the blurry background gameplay? And I'm like, duplicate this scene with the gameplay and make it blurry. <laughs> Look at that, answering multiple questions in one video, right? For example, here, if I'm shooting something, people will really, really, really see what's going on while also being able to take a peek at my ammo and also my mini map. It's to not only have a clip ready for TikTok, but also having all the information to require zero extra editing. Clipping, something very important for live streamers. It's basically a mini trailer to show that at its peak, this is how interesting your live stream can be. How funny, how cozy. And today's video is about one specific clipping method that is supposed to be the best quality, the best workflow to get a maximum amount of clips while you're streaming. But most importantly, to have your clips ready to post or at least as close as possible. Now, to be real with you, I initially wanted to make this video about the levels of clipping. But I feel like if you're watching this video, you probably already know the basics. So I'm gonna just speed run through them until we can get to what I actually wanna talk about. So level one would be the simplest, clip directly from your platform. On Twitch, for example, you can rewatch your VOD and clip, or you can have a button to actually clip on your stream deck or do it from your dashboard. So on the stream deck software, you actually have create clip under the Twitch tab, and you can set a button for that. And on Twitch's stream manager, there's also a clip that button that you can add and just click it during the stream. You can also use certain bots to make it happen. For example, a year ago, I made this video showing you how to just say clip that and have streamer bots actually take a clip and give you audio feedback if you want. And yes, According to Twitch's announcements during TwitchCon, this is gonna become something part of the platform. When you say clip that out loud, there will be something to automatically clip whatever happened. Now, what are the pros of clipping like that? And by the way, that applies to other platforms that allow you to clip too, it's not just Twitch. The pros are usually that creates a link. That means that you have that clip somewhere online, it usually appears on your page. So anyone who checks out your live stream page can check it out. So for archive purposes, but also to make your page look better and populated. But the downside is that your clips are gonna look like whatever your stream looked like at the time, meaning it's reliant on your bitrate, for example. Now, YouTube is a little bit better at this, but Twitch, for example, has a maximum of six megabits per second, meaning that if you're streaming at the highest bitrate, your stream will have a certain look to it. It will still be compressed in a certain way. If you're playing video games where all of the pixels are moving on screen, there's a lot of grass and there's a lot of details, you are going to lose quality. Now, is it a huge issue? Not really. We've seen plenty of clips go viral without having the best quality in the world, but it's not unreasonable to think that when people are scrolling, when they see a high quality clip, they are more likely to keep watching. All that to say, level two of clipping stuff, and this time we're focusing on quality, would be to clip directly from your broadcasting software. How would you do that? Well, if we're talking about OBS Studio, for example, there is something called the replay buffer. And it's something that works kind of like shadow play. You have it activated and once you press save, basically it saves the past one minute, two minutes, three minutes, you get to decide. So if you go to output and at the bottom here, you can set the maximum replay time. Well, I have it for 30 seconds and the maximum memory. So it doesn't accidentally take a huge clip that fills up your hard drive. Now under your general settings, you can also set this to automatically start replay buffer when streaming. That way you always have it on and you're sure to be able to clip. From there, it's pretty simple. You would wanna go to your hotkeys and actually set up a hotkey for the replay buffer. If you have a stream deck and the OBS Studio plugin installed, you should find a replay buffer save right here. Again, this is common knowledge, but if you've never seen it, basically replay buffer is right underneath your recording. If I turn it on right now, basically nothing changes, but for now, anything that happens on screen, basically that little button that says save right there, that little button right there, if I click it, Boom, it tells me that replay buffer has been saved. And if I go in the folder, I will see it right here. So basically the replay buffer isn't the quality of the stream, unless you set it that way in your settings. Let's go back to settings, by the way. When you go to output, your replay buffer is set to your recording quality. So where it says recording quality, I have mine to high quality, medium file size. You can also put it like a higher quality, higher file size. But in brief, it lets me record higher quality than the stream itself. Okay, cool, that's great for a platform like Twitter, if that's where you intend on posting it, or Threads or Blue Sky, I guess. But we all know, most of us are going to be posting on those short form content platforms, like TikTok, like YouTube Shorts, like Instagram Reels. So we need it in the correct format. Here comes Adam Vertical. Again, very well known, but just in case, I, I gotta tell you about it. So, Adam is a company that does a bunch of stuff, including a whole streaming suite. But if we go to products, top left, we're gonna see Vertical, and Vertical is a OBS plugin completely free. You just download, install it, and it will give you a couple of docs with a separate preview for a vertical screen. So, if I go to my docs, I can go and find Vertical, and boom, look at that. Now, I already set up my scenes, my sources, 
And the thing is, I want you to imagine this as a whole separate OBS studio, but within the same OBS studio. So you have the exact same functionalities that you would in your normal OBS preview just for a different screen. And then on top of that, you can link the scenes together. So if you switch a scene, it's going to switch to something else. Now, let me bring up the sources. So that's going to be vertical sources. There it is. And as you can see, I have my scenes here and those are just for the vertical, right? I have my be right back. And those are thought of for if I were to stream on TikTok or any platform like that. But personally, I don't really use it to stream. I only use it for clipping or just straight up recording. All right, cool. Now that we have a vertical preview of our stream, once again, to be very clear, you have to set up your sources, your scenes and blah, blah. What you can do is actually add your scene as sources. That way it's super easy. Like I have them here. It's very simple, but ultimately you decide. You will see the option called backtrack clip vertical. But of course, before that, you want to click on the cogwheel to set it up. And backtrack is basically replay buffer, but for the vertical clips. So you have it run automatically when you're streaming or recording. For example, you can set up the length. I have mine at 45 seconds, set the path and also set up the hotkey. That's very important because we actually want the hotkey to be the exact same as our OBS replay buffer if we want both. But you know, let's say for the sake of the video, we don't want both. We just want our, you know, TikTok ready clip. So set up a keyboard shortcut that you know you're not going to use for anything else. And if you have a stream deck, you can set that up as a hotkey and not as a, you know, OBS thing. So what we're going to do is create a new scene just for the vertical. And if you're wondering, how do I create a new scene for the, it's the exact same thing. If you know how to use OBS Studio, you know how to use this plugin because it's the same thing. Create a new scene, click OK. And now you have a blank scene, meaning that not only we're going to set up a scene together here, for example, I have some fake gameplay going on here. So what I can do, as I said before, is either bring in the whole scene as a source, but you can also use the clone source plugin in order to clone your gameplay, for example, or your camera or whatever you want to bring if you intend on modifying it like I'm about to. So we're on vertical scene. What I'm going to do now is add a new source and it's going to be a scene. And you can see it's asking you, you want a scene from your main thing or from Adam Vertical? We're going to go with main thing. And I believe I have. And here we're going to bring up our game scene. Again, it depends on where you want to get, get your gameplay from, but you'll see that uh, the gameplay appears here. So that's the scene. This would be like your basic setup. If you want to have like a blurry background, it <laughs> it's kind of weird to me when people ask me that. They're like, how did you get the blurry background gameplay? And I'm like, duplicate the scene with the gameplay and make it blurry. <laughs> For example, this is where the clone source would absolutely shine. So if I go to add a new source here, I can click on source clone, go to new clone type source, pick the canvas. It's going to be from main and I can just source clone the whole scene if I want to or the specific game capture, right? But what I can do now is basically grab this one, make it huge. All you have to do is bring it down, boom. And the reason why we use a clone is to add filters so it doesn't affect the first one. What filter can you use? Composite blur is one of the best plugins for blurring. So use that and there you go, it's that simple. Look at that, answering multiple questions in one video. So this is something that you can do. This should be like your basic, basic setup. If you wanna add your camera, same thing, put it in there, crop it, all good. Now, the reason I made this video in the first place, that little thing that I really wanna show you is because a clip like that is cool if you understand absolutely what's going on or if you don't need additional information, but some people would like to show their health bar, for example. If it's a clip of you clutching while you're on one HP, you would love to show off that one HP. If it's a clip of you getting a kill with like the last bullet, you would love to show it like your magazine. In games like Overwatch, if you're about to get your ultimate or if you got it at the last second and it's clutched the match, blah, 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 you wanna show all of that. Although the ultimate would be in the middle, so it would be visible. Basically any type of information that you would like to show, you can just once again, clone your sources and show them. So boom, source clone, it is from the main one, mine is called game, and you can rename it whatever you want, like health bar, if that's what you want, but simple method would be to make it pretty big and then crop it. For example, this is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go up top, hold alt, click and drag the handle, bring it there, holding alt to crop. Make sure you don't stretch it. You would have to be holding shift to stretch it anyways, but try not to stretch it because it looks awful. Every time I see a clip where, it's, where something is stretched like that, I'm like, uh, no, don't pay attention to the rounded corner because that's part of my, uh, that's my setup that's like that. So for you, it's not going to be rounded. In fact, I should probably turn that off. There you go. There you go. So now we have our clip and we have the extra information of, you know, ammo, uh, if there's health, if there's anything like that. Pretty important. Let's switch up the order, meaning having the health on top. And I'm going to bring the clip 
down a bit. And what we can do is basically re-add the minimap. So I don't have to show you that, but I'm gonna just source clone, pick the same source again. And boom, just like that, we have a TikTok ready clip with minimap included and also the ammo. Now here's the thing, does it look amazing? Not necessarily. So one thing that you can do is actually open up a scene in your main preview so you can work on masking certain information a little bit better. Well, let's do that. So I'm gonna create a new scene again on my normal thing. And it's gonna be vertical masking. Nice, I'm gonna add a new source. And let's say this one is minimap. So code type source from main is going to be game. Nice, it looks like that. And here, I have the advanced mask plugin installed. So I will have an advanced mask filter on this one. What I can do is have a look here and select my shape to be circle. Go find that mini map. It's definitely gonna be a little finicky, but you can hover over the values and then scroll to be more precise. And just like that, I have a, and just like that, I have a more precise mini map that I can place on my vertical screen. So instead of it looking like this, which you know, is not too bad, but still maybe a little distracting, I can delete my source clone five, add a new source clone, and this time just select minimap. Okay, there it is. I still need to do some cropping just to be able to move it around a little easier. There you go, but look at how much better this looks. We can even make it a little transparent. Probably play with the blending mode and you can of course place it wherever and it'll be less, way less distracting. Okay, how would we handle the, the ammo part? You can see this is two rounded rectangles with a circle here in the, in the middle. First of all, I would add a reference. So I would just put a clone source again. And honestly, like the fastest way of making this happen is to create your mask in something like Photoshop, Photo P, uh, Affinity, Canva, just like take a screenshot, which you can right click on a source and click save source screenshot. Make sure you select the right source. Okay, save source screenshot. There it is. Let's open the screenshot in Affinity by dragging and dropping it. There it is. I'm gonna turn off my camera for this one. From there, I'm gonna go select the rectangle tool. If you don't know anything about Affinity, it's basically Photoshop, but free. Uh, I have a video about it showing you all the basics. So make sure you go watch that. And what I'm gonna do now is, um, first of all, make sure that I select my rounded rectangle and then click and drag, make it a little less rounded. There you go. Uh, 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 uh. Gonna select the move tool, hold alt, click and drag to duplicate, hold shift to maintain that line, bring it in, there you go. And then what we have here is just a circle. So click on your shape tool, go ellipse, click, drag, hold shift to maintain proportions, hold space bar while you're doing that to move it around and drop it. I don't think you really want the little bottom parts here, but we'll still add them just to show you that it's possible. Cool. And um, yeah, you can turn off the background now and you could export it like this if you're gonna be using the advanced mask plugin to mask it out, or you can add a black background or you can add a black background, select rectangle, click, drag, go top left for the colors, make sure it's behind everything, boom. And this is what we have in vanilla OBS, no plugins required. Just click export, PNG is fine and save. Now, if we go back to OBS studio, I can go to filters on that source. I can click plus find image mask slash blend. Again, that's a filter that comes with OBS. Click OK, click on browse and go find that image. And would you look at that? Perfect, perfect. I don't know if I pre crop it if it's going to carry over, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to rename this ammo or oh, since it's based on something that I already had here, it actually automatically applied it to this. So now this is transparent. Well, this one is mask a little bit better, but now I can place it a little bit better. Or if I do place it outside, it won't look as blocky as before. I don't even know if you guys can see the difference right now. Pretty cool. And as I said before, you can add your own filters to this since you're using the clone tool and it's not going to affect the original thing. What I would do is add a color correction filter and then lower the opacity a little bit, right? So it's kind of see-through, maybe not that much, but yeah, there you go. You can bump up the contrast, make the whites pop up a little bit more so you can really see the information. And yeah, this is your clip before, very basic clip. Looks clean to be fair, but if you really want to show extra stuff, boom, boom, boom. Now, at least there's uh, more context. Again, you can place all of this wherever you want, but that also means that you can really, really scale up that main gameplay while still keeping basically your normal game UI that way, right? For example, here, if I'm shooting something, people will really, really, really see what's going on while also being able to take a peek at my ammo and also my minimap. Okay, Overwatch, for example, I was going to do the whole masking thing, but I realized, wait, most of the information is just a brighter color over top. The UI is just white. In case you don't know, this is usually where your ammo shows up and your cooldowns. This is good information. People watching Overwatch clips know what the abilities are. And sometimes they're like, oh, why didn't you use this? And it's like, I, it was on cooldown. 
So you want to show this in the clip, right? But not only does the UI move, but it's also a little complex to create like a simple mask. So what I'm going to do is just use a blending mode to make that happen. So in my vertical scene, I have this. I can still put a mask if I really want to, but there you go. Something that we really, really want to happen here is the color correction part. We definitely, definitely need to bump up the contrast so that the whites are whiter. So I'm gonna go to filters on it. I already had my color correction, bump up that contrast a lot and uh, lower the gamma probably. I'm gonna make sure everything underneath it is darker basically. And now I can right click, go to blending mode and set it to add. There it is. <laughs> And it's pretty much already transparent. I don't know if you can see. Again, <laughs> I know I say that a lot, but this is the advantage of knowing OBS Studio. Look how, how it's blending. But knowing the blending modes, very important. But now I could definitely have this just be here. Now, of course, it's not perfect. When there's something white, basically, that goes across it, it's going to appear, but it's no effort. We didn't have to create a mask. We didn't have to go into affinity and, and make an image and all of that. It's like we almost instantly made this transparent. All right. So I cropped this one and I can also set the blending mode to add. There you go. And then I can place this wherever I want. Now, can you still do this even though you have your camera, which is most of you? I, th I think, I don't know. I did a poll on Twitter to ask how many people actually stream with their camera. And a lot of you were like, me, me, me. Let's make some space for the camera, all right? I'm gonna clone that too, just in case. Even better, because I'm realizing I could just put this whole UI element thing on top of my camera if I wanted to. Not bad, actually. <laughs> Absolutely not bad. But here's the thing, since this is on Atom Vertical, it's in your OBS. Now, every time you do a replay buffer, you have your clip and your clip is already set up for that. Of course, it's for a specific game. If you wanna have multiple scenes or multiple games, sure. But the thing is your clip already has that. You don't have to edit that in. And your clip is gonna be the highest quality possible. So all you have to do is immediately upload it to TikTok or YouTube Shorts and then trim it from there, add the subtitles or the captions from there, and you're done. If the UI is very simple, kind of like COD, you can easily create a mask for it. If the UI is a little more complex, but high contrast, like it's mostly white stuff, <laughs> you can use a blending mode. And of course, if you spend a fair amount of time to make it look good, oh well, it, it'll, look, it'll look good. Do you see that? So we just mask the important area. And that's it. I did the same for the health bar. Yeah, here's how I would have it. If uh, if my main game was Overwatch, my clips would probably look like that. Show my cooldown, uh, my health bar, and then the clip at the bottom. That's it. So what level is that? Level five? Level six? It's the expert level. <laughs> it's to not only have a clip ready for TikTok, but also having all the information to require zero extra editing. All right, I'm tired. I need to edit this video and post it. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.